Hi folks. Um, to do the last piece of the depreciation methods, we're going to work on double declining balance method. And just to refresh your memory, the company is going to purchase a copier at a cost of 110000 salvage value of 10000 and a life of either 5 years or 20 million copies. For the double declining balance, we're going to do a life of 5 years. Okay, so let me scoot down here to it. So double declining balance. Um, I want to make sure that you pay attention because this one is different. It does not work exactly like the others did. So step one, we're going to need to determine the straight line rate at which we depreciate. And so we're going to take the whole, which is a whole number. We're going to take whole number one. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to wrap it so you can see that. So uh, determine the straight line rate, which is a whole number one divided by the life of the asset. So I'm going to take one divided by five, which is the life, and that gives me 20%. So when I have that 20%, step two is going to be to multiply the straight line rate by two to get double the rate, thus double declining balance. So 20% times two is 40%. The formula that we're going to use is the book value at the beginning of the year times the double declining balance rate equals depreciation expense. This is where it's different. This is where you need to pay attention. Okay, I'm going to highlight it in yellow so you can see it really well that this is where it's different. How about if I do that one in yellow also? We'll show everything that you need to look at. Okay, so what we want is we want the book value at the beginning of the year to start with. So in year one, our book value, remember the definition, it is cost minus accumulated depreciation. So the book value at the beginning of the year is the cost. It is not depreciable cost. So 110000 is the cost of the copier times our 40% rate gives me depreciation expense of $44,000. Again, an adjusting entry at year end, debit depreciation expense, credit the accumulated for $44,000, post it to the accumulated depreciation T account, and we have a balance in accumulated of $44,000 right there. Next is the financial statement presentation. So for year one, cost of 110 minus the accumulated depreciation of 44 gives me a book value at the end of the year of 66,000, which is what I have right here. Notice that when I come over to get the book value at the beginning of year two, it is the exact same, whoops, sorry, it is the exact same as the book value at the end of year one. It's kind of like beginning and ending inventories. Okay, so I'm going to take 66,000 times the same rate of 40% and that's going to give me depreciation expense of 26.4. Make your journal entry again at the end of the second year. Post to the accumulated account. Now the balance is 70,400 in accumulated depreciation. Year two's financial statement presentation, cost minus accumulated at the end of year two equals book value at the end of year two of 39.6. Okay, again, that book value comes over to the, to the beginning of year three. I did it again. Okay, beginning of year three, 39.6 times 40%. The expense is 15.840. Make your journal entry for year three, post to the accumulated, and get a balance of 86,240 in accumulated depreciation. So notice that accumulated depreciation is 86,240. Go to financial statement presentation, cost minus accumulated equals ending book value of 23,760. Okay, the 23,760 will at the end of year three 
will be what I start with at the beginning of year 4. Times 40 percent gives me 9504. Make my journal entry for year 4. Post it. Get a new balance in accumulated which is the 95744. Show my financial statement presentation. Cost of 110 minus 95744 equals the 14256 which is my new book value at the end of year 4. And it becomes uh-oh. How did that happen? Okay. Actually, what we're doing here. Okay. So year five is really strange. So what happens is I would really, I would put in the, what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do right here. Okay. In year five, the depreciation expense is going to be the lesser of the 14, Okay, see the 14,256 right here? Times the 40%, which is 5702. If I use that number, I end up with too much depreciation expense. If I take the 14,000, the book value at the end of year four, and subtract the book value I want to have at the end of year five, which is the same as the salvage value, that difference of 4256 is what I really want to have right here because that's the, all I can have so that the total depreciation expense equals a hundred thousand right here and so that my depreciation exp my excuse me my accumulated depreciation equals a hundred thousand and my book value equals ten thousand at the end of year five so really the 10,000 I want is here. I don't want the 10,000. I want the 14. And I want this number is a plug. Okay? So because it's a plug, I'm going to put it in yellow. And we have to make it fit every time in the double declining balance depreciation method. Um, and that's an important part, part to remember. So you've got two things to really pay attention to. The formula starts with book value at the beginning of the year, not depreciable cost. And the second thing to pay attention to is your very last depreciation expense will be a plug. Okay, in the real world, what happens is somewhere around the midpoint of the asset's life, companies will choose to change their accounting method and use straight line depreciation from there forward. That's called a change in accounting principle and you have to do several different things um, in order to get that uh, through a gap, generally accepted accounting principles. And so it's beyond the scope of this class and we're not even going to go through it. Um, it's a topic mainly for advanced accounting, I believe. Okay, so that takes care of depreciation, I believe. I hope you've learned a lot, and I hope these videos were helpful for you. All right, have a good day. Bye.